हमारे वक्त की धड़कन हमारा चिंतन हमारी भावनाएं हमारे विचार कभी कोमल बातचीत तो कभी इंटरेक्शन तेज तरदार तय करें मिलकर वॉट इज रॉन्ग वॉट इज राइट आई टीवी पर अशोक व्यास के साथ इन साइट टू नाइट कैन पॉलिटिक्स एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी गो टूगेदर नमस्कार मैं हूं अशोक व्यास और कार्यक्रम का नाम इन साइट टू नाइट विद अशोक व्यास आज शुक्रवार का दिन है और आज के दिन हम आपके लिए लेकर आए हैं एक विशेष कार्यक्रम ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसको जिसमें जुड़कर आप वहां पहुंचेंगे वेर यू विल अंडरस्टैंड एल बिट मोर ऑफ हाउ दिस वर्ड स्पिरिचुअलिटी कैन बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ अवर लाइफ एंड एज वी टॉक अबाउट अप्लाइड साइंस the same way we talked about applying spirituality in our lives with someone who came from putpati ved narayan ji has not only learnt vedic chanting ma in philosophy gold medalist ma in sanskrit someone who was conferred gold medal as a teacher by the then president dr abdul kalam uh, he especially uh, fortunate to have uh, been in close proximity of satya sai baba and he used to lead uh, the morning vedic chanting at putparthi <laughs> పెద్ద ప్రాపర్టీ కాలేజీ పిల్లలే ప్రైమరీ స్కూల్ కాలేజీ హైయర్ సెకండరీ స్కూల్ పిల్లలంతా కూడా నా వెంట వెంటనే ఉంటుంటారు అన్ని వదలి వారి పోరు వారి వదల నేను ఉండలేను would you say we are born with shraddha or this is something that can be developed when you talk about faith in life there are certain things we have to take it on the basis of faith for example when mother tells you that so and so your father you have the full confidence in mother's words that so and so is your father or when you are traveling in a car you have the full faith in the driver that he will take you to the destination safe if i don't have the faith in that driver then i may not even sit in the car unless i have the faith that i will go and come back home safely i won't even leave home so there are certain things in life we have to take it on the basis of faith there are so many things for example if we say that only after experience i will have faith that is a stupid way of arguing for example have you experienced the other side of the moon still you have the faith that there is another side of the moon okay you may that somebody else have experienced it then you should accept that faith on somebody else's experience in fact many people feel that only after experience uh god in their life they will have faith in god in fact there is a wrong way of assumption because if you have faith experience automatically will follow this like asking teach me swimming then i will enter the water but it is a wrong way of how can you learn swimming without entering the water so first you enter the water you can learn swimming so faith is something which is very very fundamental and it is foolishness to argue that only after experiences you will have faith so there are certain things in life we have to take it on the basis of faith so when we have faith in ordinary people or ordinary instances why we cannot have faith in god who is the supreme powerful who is the all knowing and all protective lord of all so that's a very uh, valid argument again a counter argument if i say and uh, if you don't have faith then there is no experience but uh, the kind of logic with which we work uh, these days may tell we feel that uh, there are certain practices which people say that if you follow them 
you will experience God or you will have more of peace within. Um, and you, you think that I live in scientific age, uh, I'm working with internet, uh, there are many new uh, technology oriented toys coming my way, uh, which keeps me engaged. And now these people go and chant uh, some mantras about which I know nothing. And uh, why should I take any interest in basically our, uh, so the other mindset uh, with due respect, with energy, think that these people by chanting mantras are actually wasting time. Now, based on your experience, uh, of course, that that's not the way you have experienced. So, Share with us your initial interest in Vedic chanting. Initially, for anyone for that matter, they may not have an interest in simply hearing some sound vibrations. So when you actually, if you put that, because there are so many parapsychological tests nowadays, it has been done that, and they have proved that by chanting Gayatri mantras, the amount of peace that can be created in the society it is not that something visible it is not uh, something you know you can cognize on the spot it is not something revolutionary it is evolution the change that is brought about in people in fact uh, we had an experiment conducted in our school with the children they had uh, they had taken two group of plants and uh, they have given all the ideal circumstances of exposure in the, in the form of light and all other conditions. In a controlled condition, these plants were brought up. The only difference what they, I mean, um, what the, these set of plants had, different things have. One set of plants, we were continuously exposing them to the Gayatri mantras, whereas the other set of uh, plants, we were exposing them to the rock music. And soon we found that almost after 15-20 days, those which got exposed to this rock music slowly started withering away. Whereas those which got exposed to the Gayatri mantras, they started growing beautifully and they flowered in no time. So this is this experience, these are more subtle. This is not, uh, we can only see the end product. We cannot, uh, when the thing, when the actual process is going on, you may not find any immediate result. But only due to, as you rightly pointed out, we are in the scientific age. And uh, I also want you to have an open mind. And uh, you go through the experiments and when you find it is successful, then only accept. Because blind people say blind faith. There is nothing like blind faith. The faith is always something positive. So positively speaking, uh, in the presence of Ved Nayanji, who uh, not only is a Vedic scholar, uh, philosophy and Sanskrit has been a subject, he has taught them also. And he has been fortunate in uh, leading a Vedic chanting in the presence of Satya Sai Baba at Puttaparthi. So who would be better than you to uh, share the correct pronunciation of Gayatri Mantra and uh, maybe uh, some of our viewers will get uh, the opportunity of experiencing uh, the vibrations, how uh, they play uh, on their mind. Let me also tell you that Gayatri Mantra has got a different intonation. In fact, Gayatri Mantra occurs not only in one place. You can, for example, Surya Upanishad, there is the Gayatri Mantra occurs. Mahanarayana Upanishad, the Gayatri Mantra occurs. So, there are variation in intonations. So in Gayatri Mantra also, there are difference in variation. And what you find in Shukla Yajurveda, the Gayatri Mantra is different from what you find in Krishna Yajurveda. So the way, this is what I have been taught by my Guru. This is what I, this is how I chant Gayatri Mantra. Om. Bhur bhuva subaha tat savitur varenyam bhargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yona prajotayat. 
So if you if you don't mind, you um, want to share the basic meaning of Gayatri Mantra. Definitely. Gayatri is pancha mukhi having five faced one. That is why we whenever we chant Gayatri, we break the entire mantra at five places. First phase representing Om. The second phase representing Bhu Bhuva Suvaha. Third one, Tat Savitur Varenyam. Fourth one, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. And fifth one is Dhyo Yona Prajodaya. This is a mantra. Why it is called Gayatri? Because Gayantam Trayate the Gayatri. Whomever recites this Gayatri mantra, it protects such a person. Number one. Second thing is, there is another reason why it is called Gayatri. Because the meter with which the words, the mantra is involved. Meter means the exact number of words in each. When you split up the mantra, you will have the equal number of letters. For example, for Anushtuk Chandas, you have like when you take Shuklam Varadaram Vishnum, Shashivarnam Chadurbhujam, Prasanna Vadanam Dhyaye, Sarva Vigno Bhashandaye. If you actually count, not according to the English letters, Shuklam Varadharam Vishnum, eight letters. Shashivarnam Chadurbhujam, eight. Prasanna Vadanam Dhyayet 8. Sarva Vignopa Shanta 8. So this has got four padas, that is the four, uh, what do you say, four, four quarters having equal number of letters. These are called Anushtuk meter. Whereas Gayatri meter, it contains 24 letters. That is why because of the meter, it is called Gayatri. This mantra is also termed as Gayatri. And this Gayatri mantra, it the first part refers to the meditative part. That is Om. Then Bhur Bhuva Suvaha. Bhuloka is this present world. Bhuarloka is the nether world. Suarloka is the upper world. Tat Savitur Varenyam. Tat, that, Savituhu, Varenyam, the orb, the brilliance of the Lord Savita. Bhargo, Devasya, Dhimahi. Dhimahi, I meditate upon Bhargo, Devasya, Devasya of the Lord, Bhargaha, on that brilliance of that Lord, I meditate upon. Dhyo, Yo, Naha. Prajotayat. This part becomes the actual prayer. Till here it was the meditation. The last part, Dhyo Yona Prajotayat. Dhyaha is intellect. Dhyaha Yaha Naha Yaha. That one. It is not called male or female. That power. Yaha Naha Avar. Prajotayat. Illuminate. Let that that power illuminate all of us. It is so, it is not a selfish prayer. You are praying to Gayatri that you illuminate only me. No, it is a universal prayer. Let all of us get benefit out of it. That is why the importance of Gayatri. Let all of us get benefit out of it. And that is why uh, Gayatri Mantra or uh, it is also referred to as Ved Mata Gayatri. And we are sitting with Ved Narayanji himself. There is so much uh, related to prayers having universal aspect. And in today's show, uh, with uh, the help of Ved Narayanji, we are trying to enter into that area where we say how to apply spirituality in our lives. And how uh, Vedic science or Vedic Wangmai, the wealth uh, given to us by our sages, uh, could help us in living a life uh, of uh, success uh, and fulfillment. So we'll continue our conversation. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. Vedic 
मंत्रों का उपयोग करते हुए क्या आप अपने जीवन में स्वस्थ रह सकते हैं क्या ये ठीक है कि मंत्रों के लाभ को कमर्शियल ढंग से उपयोग में लाया जाए वट आर द थॉट ऑफ वेद नारायण जी आई टॉक टू हिम अबाउट दीज इश्यूज ऑल्सो यू बींग विद जॉय वेन आई टू टॉल एंड फ्लू हाई You shared my sorrows. You understood my feelings. You admired my innocence. You accepted my failings. You gave yourself to me. Uh talking about applying spirituality in our lives. What would you say could help someone in breaking uh, that inbuilt Uh, idea that spirituality will take me away from my material prosperity or would not leave uh, enough uh, of uh, energy for me to pursue uh, the goals of taking care of family and etc in fact i think it is the other way around many of the people in the present day world they pray to god only for more for their material aspects <laughs> so it is not that spirituality is something different from our daily life see it is wrong to distinguish between the worldly life and spiritual life in fact we should practically uh, once uh, my my god and guru sri sathya sai baba had told me that see those who have um, only the partial devotion those who have partial devotion they will have only like a partial job or he was telling about you know only those who have complete devotion to lord they will only get all the benefit not part time devotees swami was saying not part time devotion you will not have all the benefits so i was asking swami what do you what is the what is the meaning of part time devotion part time devotion means that is what i think most of us can be categorized in that way morning when we get up we have a busy schedule that day you go into the puja room you light up a nagarbatti or a night or light up a lamp you take aarti quickly all the time looking into the watch you are getting late for your office and you quickly finish so many ritualistic so mechanical you have absolutely no mind involved there you finish the puja you get into the car you are off to the office and till next day you will not even think of god poor god has to wait for you in your prayer hall all the way so this is why what is called part time devotion then full time devotion means sada sarvatra sada harichandra सर्वत्र सदा सर्वकालेशु सर्वत्र हरिचिंतनम थिंकिंग ऑफ द लॉर्ड एट ऑल पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एट एवरी मोमेंट ऑफ आवर लाइफ सो आई आस्क्ड हिम इज इट रियली पॉसिबल बिकॉज़ टुडे इफ आई आस्क्ड हिम स्वामी इफ आई हैव टू थिंक ऑफ यू ऑल द टाइम देन व्हाट अबाउट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द क्लासेस हाउ कैन आई गो एंड टीच द चिल्ड्रन इफ आई हैड टू ऑल द टाइम थिंकिंग ऑफ यू स्वामी सेज दैट्स अ रॉन्ग कांसेप्ट Swami says, "Why do you think that that work is different from a spiritual work? Even that work is when you offer it to the God. Think that you are doing it for the sake of God. When you do that, naturally, you that becomes like an offering. Ordinary work will be transformed into worship when we offer it to the God. It is not the question of good or bad. That is not." whatever work we are doing we should offer it to the god then it becomes even an ordinary work will become a yatnya a sacrifice a supreme sacrifice that is what exactly lord krishna has said in bhagavad gita also karmanyeva adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadatena ma karma phala hedu bohu ma te astu akarmani he says see let your duty is only to perform the actions karma yoga and when it become karma yoga when you offer it to the god the ordinary karma also is transformed into karma yoga 
Otherwise, ordinary actions will remain as ordinary actions. When we offer it to the God, karma is transformed into karma yoga. So that is what is required. So offering to the Lord uh, and it becomes karma yoga sounds very good, but then it demands our clarity about who we consider God. And many times uh, we sometimes end up finding a particular form or in your case as you were uh, blessed or it was special grace on you to be in the close proximity of the physical form of Satya Sai Baba, then when you are away from him or now that he is not... Uh, with us in his physical form, then how that relationship is sustained. So let me sort of sum it up. What is it that you would say could be a potential definition of God, number one? Number two, how to realize or have the clarity that you are related to God? See, the definition of God, it it depends upon each individual. See, first of all, many of us, we all feel that we want God or we want a realization of God. But are we clear that what we are looking for? First of all, we should have a clear-cut definition of Lord. I am reminded of a story from Swami Rama's life. When Swami Rama once uh, asked his Guru that, See, so long I have been in your company. And what is the use? You have not shown me God. Then the Guru says, Okay, be ready. Then tomorrow morning I will show you God. So he was so excited. Next day he is going to see God. So the whole night he couldn't even sleep because God. he knows that usually the Guru always speaks the truth. So next day morning he has finished his bath. He is ready. Any moment his Guru will show God. So he was waiting and waiting and waiting. Nothing was happening. It was already uh, lunch time. He felt in his mind that before seeing God, he should be empty stomach and he should not take any food. And it was already lunch time. And the Guru says, come on, sit down for lunch. Then he asked, what you have already forgotten? He asked, what, what I have forgotten? What is it? Yesterday only you told me you will show me God. Oh, the Guru says, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it. Tell me, okay, you want to see God. Tell me, what type of God you want to see? What type of God? You mean there are different types of gods? He says, then the Guru says, if I tell you that the entire universe, whatever you see is God, you will not believe it. If I tell you that you are God, you will not believe it. So, what is your idea of God? I will show you that. So, he said, okay, give me time. Let me think. And he never asked that question again to Guru. Why? Because we, we, we are not clear of what we are looking for. If I have a clarity that, see, these are my questions. If somebody can answer, somebody can give answers to my deep questions. He is God for me. According to my definition is that. Each one will have their own definition. If somebody can fulfill the criteria, these criteria of mine, He is God for me. If somebody can give me clarity of thoughts, remove all the doubts in my mind, He is God for me. A person who is hungry and really crying out of hunger, if somebody can come and give him food at that moment, that is God for him. If a person who doesn't have a job, he has been you know, put through a lot of uh, stress and turmoil. Somebody calls him and offers him a job. He is throughout in his life, he looks at him like God. So what each one of us definition of God, depending upon definitely there is God. Number one. Second question you ask me is how I sustain. That is where the true spiritual masters are. True spiritual masters are not confined to a time, space or form. Remember that. Though physically, today Sat Sai Baba may not be there, but he has been guiding me every moment of my life. Whenever I called on him, he is there to help me at all point of time. That is why I firmly hanker upon him. So there are so many interesting aspects based on uh, each one's experience and that was a very pertinent question. 
what is it, uh, what type of God you want to see. And uh, he mentioned uh, if you are looking for a job and someone helps you get a job, maybe you look at them as God. And I know many of you would agree with me uh, if someone shows us or actually better uh, gives us maybe a million dollars, couple of million dollars, then we temporarily might think that he's God. And of course, uh, experience tells us that uh, in the long term, that might not be a true way of uh, connecting with God. So moving towards the uh, other aspect where uh, with our conviction of being one with God, uh, the question of universality as is given to us in some of our Vedic uh, stotras also. And I have often heard the uh, Purusha Sukta is chanted. Uh, chanted at various occasions. If you kindly chant some of the lines of Purush Sukta and how uh, God is, um, if I say, defined or described in that. In the Purush Sukta, the God is described in the first line says, Sahasra Sherusha Purushaha Sahasraksha Sahasrapad Sahasra Shirusha Purushaha. Here the God is considered having thousand heads. Why only thousand heads? In fact, um, Sri Satisai Baba was there to say that it is not he is only confined to, this is only a metaphorical representation that thousand heads refers to each and every human being, those who are all present in the entire universe. It is it is a Vedic mantra which shows that that God is universally present. So each and every one of us are the embodiment of divinity. So Sahasra Shirsha Purushaha, Sahasra Chaha, Sahasrapad. He sees with thousand eyes, means he is omniscient. Sahasrapad, he has got thousands of feet, means Whenever we pray, he is there to appear quickly. So he travels so fast, is omnipotent, omniscient. Sabhumim vishato vrutva atyatishtad dashangulam. Saha, he, bhumim vishato vrutva, after enveloping the entire earth, atyatishtad dashang, he extends beyond ten angulas. The, again, the measurement here, it is not our type of, these, these are all the thing. say, the Vedic mantra, we should not, in, uh, you should not um, interpret them literally, though they are in Sanskrit, the meaning of that is something beyond. This has to come from inner experience rather than the superficial meaning of the Sanskrit words. Each of the, each and every intonation has got a different meaning here. It is, uh, intonation has got such deep meaning. It is like, no, because all these mantras have been got by sages. They didn't compose it. They cognized it. In their intuitive flight, they came to, in the mystical flight, they came to face to face with divinity. And that sound vibrations, they accepted and they translated. So if I have to really understand what the meaning of this, I have to raise my consciousness to the level of the sages. My friend is standing on top of the mountain. He is looking on the other side and explaining to me who is standing at the bottom. He is talking about some uh, peculiar garden having some elephantic flowers and the moment I have seen elephant, I know flowers. So my mind tried to interpret in the way of elephant, flower, how it does look like. So that is how my mind works. But if I really have to understand what he really means, I have to climb up the mountain, stand along with him, look to the other side, then I will clearly understand what he really means. So these are all not... Uh, 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 simple Sanskrit words which has got meaning. Of course it has got meaning, but it is something beyond. So uh, very um, rarely we want uh, to go for something beyond. We want the tangible 
the the problems that we are confronting which are physically present for us uh, to go away and if we uh, talk about good health and how mantras uh, help if they do uh, some sometimes we come across people who use mantras in a commercial way uh, they tell us to practice certain thing in exchange of money so does that take away uh, the potency of mantras as their effect on us so i think there is an element of selflessness or um, surrendering to god etc should be in the picture but we have so many people amongst us who are looks like uh, making use of all this knowledge for commercial gains is that wrong in your opinion that is one secondly um, talking about mahamrityunjay mantra please chant the mantra and share with us its significance because many times people think that this is uh, a way uh, that would alleviate uh, you from some physical ailments see i don't want to comment upon the people those who sell mantras if i wanted to put it in that way unfortunately that also shows that one thing is that because i don't want to comment basically because of two things second thing is if they really truly have that faith in the mantra any mantra for that matter because what does mantra means the definition of mantra is manana trayate iti mantra by just by recollecting them it saves you it protects you that is what mantra is if i have to if i have the faith that mantra will definitely protect me then probably i will not make it as a means to attain something so personally speaking if you ask me that mantras whoever wants definitely a sincere devotee should be given it freely it is not that i got it from uh, it is not my personal you know what to say wealth it is a common wealth which is given to us by the sages in that way that is the property of the sages so everyone each and every human being on this earth has got a right on this mantras number one second thing is the mrtyunjaya mahamrtyunjaya mantra it says om trimbagam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarugami vabandhanat mrtyor mukche yamamrita at this is called the mahamrtyunjaya mantra and when this is chanted even before starting from suppose you are on a journey starting from the house before when you chant this it protects you from any accidents it also protects you from the various illness all the terrible illness what we undergo the mahamrtyunjaya mantram has got the ability to cure that especially a sadhaka who does this so many number of times with full concentration they are able to they get vak shuddhi that is called the power in their speech and when they chant even they touch a person their disease get cured so this has got such a, well, not only mahamrtyunjaya mantra even gayatri mantra it has got the same potency so some of these mantras uh, have been given to us by sages so that see ultimately after curing the disease what next it is not again for us to um, for the longevity of life so that we can enjoy sensual pleasures not for that so that at least we will turn inward because it is said that jantunam nara janma durlabham for for a human a human birth is a very very rare thing to obtain having obtained human birth what is that we require to do in this very life itself we have to realize or we have to travel the path to divinity because already house children family this is what everywhere it all to all point of time it is there but what is that ultimately we should gain in life so unless we need longevity of life for what so that not to enjoy more and more but to end joy <laughs> that is what we require and not for this physical happiness 
So what is the aim of life? Uh, in a subtle way, Ved Naranji reminds us that longevity of the physical form of uh, uh, this body is not the ultimate aim. But what is the ultimate aim and the aim with which uh, we are sitting here right now, which involves our need to stay in harmony with people around us, and also, as earlier we mentioned about applied spirituality, can politics and spirituality go together? We'll talk to Ved Naranji right after this break. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Inside Runner with Ashok. We asked today, my guest is Ved Naranji, who has come all the way from Puttaparthi and he has traveled uh, to various countries sharing uh, the knowledge of uh, Vedas uh, in various Vedic retreats and uh, talking about applied spirituality. Many times people think that those who are uh, pursuing spiritual goals should stay away from politics and uh, if um, I may recollect in your presence, Ved Naranji, recently uh, Varanasi was uh, the center of a lot of political action and uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he wants to make Kashi a spiritual uh, capital uh, and uh, to work towards um, getting the glory back to Varanasi. So simply speaking, uh, we have often heard that uh, if you are talking about politics, then you are uh, probably going away from pursuing your spiritual goals. What would you say to that? I view politics as one more way of life. Politics is a way of life. But Swami Bhagavan Sri Satisai Baba has clearly said that politics without principles is not only useless, it is dangerous. So when there are so many politicians who have got great principles in their life, so it is again a way of life. Many people, there are, uh, of course there are, it is not that, see we always look at politics with a uh, question mark, with a doubt in our mind. But many people can still hold on to values, though it is not that easy. Still holding on to the values, they can follow a righteous life. In fact, King Janaka, he ruled the entire country. Probably you can say that, of course, the times were different. But still, almost challenges were the same. The question of how totally detached you are. Janaka was a person, the King Janaka was a person, he was totally detached from whatever the policies he was making. And uh, no, he did not want... See, it is, it is very, very essential that whoever is in the power, that they work for the welfare of the humanity rather than for their personal gains. So I think that's a very valid point. Uh, if uh, politics is with principles, then the chances of uh, the spiritual upliftment uh, are quite uh, bright. Um, uh, working with the aim to serve the people, that is the key. Now, in order to serve, you need to have good uh, relationship, not only with others, but with yourself. So, would you be kind enough in sharing any stotra or mantra which you feel might help someone in being in harmony with oneself? Because this is, uh, I mean, the, um, being harmony with oneself is, I, I don't think there is a particular mantra for it. No, this is an attitude. This is something which we have to develop within. Because mantras help us to calm our mind. But ultimate attunement with my views, it has to be to do with oneself. Uh, the, that, uh, I mean, mantras in general can help only to calm our mind. You know, uh, with a calm mind, if you want to work collectively towards having a world full of harmony, um, do you see some concrete, potential result that may come out of, uh, let us say, having some sort of a yajna or collective chanting, does it affect the world consciousness in some way? And uh, many times people think that this is uh, confined to people following certain faith, 
but as we earlier were discussing in the applied spirituality aspect this connects with the whole world absolutely there are prayers because in fact the prayers of the sages or the vedic mantras they were never for of course to certain not for individual benefit alone they always prayed for the welfare of the entire humanity as uh, as swami directly said that sai baba has said that when there is peace in the individual there will be peace in the family when there is peace in the family there will be peace in the society when there is peace in the society there will be peace in the nation when there is peace in the nation there will be peace in the world so so peace in the universal peace is something it should not that uh, which can be obtained by advertisement or first it should start within oneself and the second thing is what sages always prayed for is samasta lokaha sugino bhavantu let everyone be in the universe be happy it is not they are praying to god oh lord let me and my fa- family be happy no let the entire universe be happy when they because they knew that when you pray for the entire universal happiness you become part of you also become part of it you also get a benefit out of it instead of praying that lord let there be rain today only on top of my house so that i get water you pray that lord let there be rain in the entire county or let in the entire country so that let everybody get benefit out of it so that when the, when it rains everywhere you also your house also get benefit out of it so prayers are always it is better to direct universally by which not only you enjoys your share everybody else also will enjoy their share so there is so much uh, that we can learn from ved nandi would looking at the time constraints uh, if i may request you to chant uh, any shanti mantra that is very dear to you and also share with us in the end of shanti mantras uh, shanti 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 is uttered three times what is the significance of that the three times chanting of the shanti mantra is represent it is adi bhaudika adi devika and adhyatmika see these are the three type of uh, um, calamities usually we face adi bhaudika refers to all the physical the mundane level like uh, mosquitoes and other insects through which you no know, like the bed bugs and the ordinary the usual types of uh, troubles which man undergoes so we have to that is called adi bhaudika type of troubles then adi daivika type of troubles are little more complicated that uh, it is more refers to the internally which uh, uh, which can um, uh, bother us from you no know, all thought processes and other process but as adhyatmika refers to like the nature calamities you no know, the storm there is lightning thunder so we should have peace from all these three aspects that is why shanti 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 he is uh, chanted uh, thrice in sarvo vai sukhena sando sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kaschit dukkham apnuyad om shanti 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 sarvo vai sukhena sando let everybody be happy sarve santu niramaya let everybody enjoys good health without any disease sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu let all see only what is good what is auspicious because swami always says see no evil see what is good many of our mind makeup is made from our vision when we have good vision when we have good sight good sight it is not that uh, our 
I mean, I don't, I am not talking about the physical side. When we think with the, when we look through the glasses of love, we see love everywhere. I am talking about that type of. Sarve bhadrani pasyantu. Let people see always auspiciousness. Ma khaschit dukha maapnuyat. Let no one suffer. Let no one suffer from anything. Let there be peace and peace and peace. Thank you. Wonderful. Let there be peace, peace and peace. And those were the words coming from Ved Narayanji who has come all the way from Puttaparthi and uh, on his uh, journey of sharing Vedic knowledge by conducting Vedic retreats at uh, various places. Uh, so as we conclude this conversation, very briefly, if you would like to share your experience of this trip, uh, the places that you touched, the hearts uh, that resonated with Vedic chanting in your presence. Well, I have been, this time mainly I have been Latin American countries to Colombia and Argentina. And uh, I am surprised to find that uh, in fact, many of the people there, they are so much interested in the, our Vedic culture. They want to follow the Vedic culture and their thirst for Vedic knowledge was something really heartening. Wonderful. So, mm -hmm. there is so much more uh, that should become a part of our lives. And one thing uh, that we all would probably agree is the precious, precious love and our ability to receive and radiate love increases uh, by being in the presence of uh, these uplifting Vedic chanting. Andaru manchi bangar na pillalu yek paristhiti naapu telsu gaani marapu teri jee pillal andar kuranu swamante pranam istunar andu valna varik ne ne prana sare ne ne varne prana san chinche istana. Pillal under Kula, Suche Manga Jeevin Chari. Mir Ekarundana Kuranu, Nin Venta Janta in Tauntano. Rapid Nunchi Kuranu, Mir Ye Paniches Nagani, is Swampani, 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 Nalkunchi Indi. Today was a special insight tonight with the show grass. Uh, we talked to with Nara NG, and I'm sure you enjoyed his explanation of how all uh, these aspects. Uh, which are coming to us uh, by the grace of sages and this uh, wealth of knowledge which is flowing for many centuries is still relevant and it definitely helps us in connecting with life in its totality and you connect with yourself uh, in your totality and enjoy the weekend in a very special way with uh, those good wishes uh, Promising you for a very special Insight Tonight show on Monday. This is Ashok Vyas. Namaskar. No,